Hello and welcome. My name is Christoph Pütz and I'm your IT career guide. In today's video, I want to talk about should you be more an IT generalist or should you be more a subject matter expert to improve and drive your career, take on more responsibilities, have a higher level of job satisfaction and as a bonus, uh, get an increased salary as you go. Before we go into this video, if you don't mind subscribing to my channel and uh, hitting the like button for the video, it would really help me with the YouTube algorithm. So now, but let's take a look. Why should you be a generalist or why should you be a subject matter expert? And why should you potentially change a little bit where you are a subject matter expert or how, how does that role look different compared to just a few years ago? So the first thing to really understand is that technology and the change, um, the, the pace of change for technology has changed dramatically over the last few years. If you look back just 5, 10, 15, 20 years, it doesn't really matter. Technology was still changing and advancing, but the pace was significantly slower. Now, if you look at technology, it's changing dramatically. I mean, you see monthly updates to major software applications and services coming from the cloud. Um, you will see two or three major releases of products um, within the same year compared to just a few years ago where you had maybe one major software release and a few maintenance releases uh, during the year. So that is changing already. So you need to become more agile and adjust to these type of changes. On the other side, if you look at being a subject matter expert, it takes a while to really obtain that knowledge and become the subject matter expert. Here's an example. So Microsoft Exchange is Microsoft's email program. And I keep this very simplified. So um, just from, a, from that perspective. So Microsoft Exchange used to be a multi-server on-prem type of environment with gateway servers, mailbox servers, and so on. Um, so it was not just when you were a Microsoft Exchange administrator that you needed to know how the application itself works, but you also needed to understand how all the different hardware and application and operating system pieces work together uh, to be able to maintain and operate that environment. So then you take a look at Microsoft Exchange Online, where Microsoft simply removed that physical layer underneath Microsoft Exchange, and now it is Exchange Online. For Exchange Online, you don't need to know anymore what is a mailbox store, um, a mailbox server, a gateway server, whatever it is. All that has fallen away. You configure the appropriate pieces that um, Microsoft Exchange Online can go and send email messages, that spam filtering is in place, and all the good pieces, but a lot of that portion that was previously um, part of a subject matter expertise that has fallen away. So now think about large companies that potentially had two or three Microsoft Exchange administrators, maybe a senior level exchange administrator and a junior level or a mid-level or at least somebody with secondary responsibilities in that area. So now with that one big layer removed, um, well, where's the value that you carried previously? Um, suddenly um, you don't have that anymore. So that value is gone. And um, that's really where if you would have been a subject matter expert on Microsoft Exchange, um, suddenly almost with, the, um, with the, a snip of a finger, your value is just cut in half. So that's really where that subject matter expert on just Exchange would have been very limiting. Microsoft SCCM, it's a client management tool that Microsoft offers to customers so that they can manage their large environment, push out software deployments, operating system upgrades, manage hardware remote into machines, provide baselines, software metering, and, and, and. There's a whole list of features and benefits that it provides but it's an on-prem system. And for an SCCM system administrator, it was a subject matter expert role to really know how all the different pieces work together. It's not just the application server, the database server, distribution points, um, how replication works and, and all these pieces. Microsoft is now moving towards the cloud and um, they started a few years ago with Microsoft Intune to take over some of that functionality that SCCM uh, has and it will change even more. And if you are an SCCM subject matter expert, well, at a certain point when that service completely shifts into the cloud, most of the value that you provided will disappear because nobody cares anymore about distribution points and uh, the database server, the cloud will take care of that. 
Now, how can you adjust your career and your, um, I want to say, expertise level in that regard? Let's take a look at the cloud services. I mentioned already Microsoft. We can also talk about Amazon AWS. So you want to become a generalist in those areas, meaning you have a generalist level understanding of Microsoft's or Amazon's cloud services. So let's say you know exactly um, what Amazon AWS is, which services it offers and where it really goes deep down where subject matter expertise is required. So let's say that makes about 40% of your expertise that you need to carry. So that will be the foundation of your subject matter expertise. And then you start playing, I put that in quotes, playing inside that box that is called Amazon AWS or Microsoft 365 slash Azure or Google Cloud Services, it doesn't matter. You build up that foundation, you have a really solid and good understanding of what is capable, what the environments are capable of doing, what services they provide. And then you can start becoming an expert in certain areas there. The nice thing here is since you have that good foundation, you can easily make either lateral moves, um, meaning you slightly shift within that box and um, obtain other knowledge, or you can really go even deeper and then uh, accelerate your career growth up and take on more responsibilities and potentially increase your salary. So it's a very important step to uh, have that broad knowledge and then go deep. And um, then you also need to adjust the way how you obtain knowledge. So if these services provide monthly or quarterly updates, that's how your knowledge needs to grow as well. So it's really important to stay on top of this technology, understand where the changes are happening and see how you can implement those because some vendors also force upgrades onto their customers so that they can maintain a really um, solid cloud services. So here's an example, ServiceNow as an example. Um, they have two releases per year and at a certain point they will force upgrade your environment if you are not upgrading yourself. It makes their life easier on the back end that they can maintain their cloud services with a certain version and are not suddenly falling behind and having to maintain a large number of different um, service releases. So they will make sure they will not support more than four versions, um, otherwise they will force upgrade you. So that's uh, really what's coming. So that's where you need to adjust your learning cycle. You will not have to learn a whole new version every time, but um, small incremental steps uh, where your knowledge increases and where you maintain that subject matter expert level. Same thing with the generalist level. I mean, if, if those services at the foundation level change, you want to be aware of that and maintain that level as well. So I hope that makes a little sense how you need to become more agile and flexible with the technology around it. You have to understand that technology around you is uh, changing faster and at a much more frequent pace. And if you do that, I think you are really in for the long haul and can have a really successful career in information technology. So I hope you liked this video. I hope it was helpful. Um, if you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. Again, if you have not subscribed to my channel, please do so as well. And then I hope to see you in my next video. Thank you for watching and have a great day. Bye bye.